After reading the GT Planet article about how IGN did a report on the Gran Turismo Sport livery editor saying that it was far better than expected, that gave me an idea to do sort of my own report, if this is a report, on other games that had far better than expected livery editors as well. And this is pretty much to sew directions that GT Sport could go to make their livery editors better. Or maybe they could go in their own direction and make it better in a new way. But I think it's best to show how some of the old games did it to show good things and bad things they did. That maybe GT Sport could put into practice or not put into practice to make their livery editor as good as possible. To start off, I'll start off with the first game that I started off making cars in with the livery editor. Midnight Club Los Angeles. This game, as far as I can tell, doesn't have online anymore. But there's a whole heck of heap of videos on YouTube showing cars done in the livery editor. And the system that they used back then was called Rate My Ride. Where pretty much any car that you look at, whether it be the highest rated, most viewed, most downloaded, or newest, you can rate if you wanted to anywhere from a scale of 1 to 10 if I remember correctly. And you can look at the, the highest rated cars at any given time. So, like, the trending cars. Or you could look at the most downloaded cars. Or you could look at the cars with sort of combination of both. A lot of downloads and high rated. As far as I know, Need for Speed doesn't have a system like this that they ever put in place. I haven't played the game in a while, but last time I checked, Need for Speed 2015 had just a... Cars that got the most downloads were ones that were high, highest up on the list. And then I also had the trending, but not with ratings. One thing that puts Midnight Club LA above the rest is you could actually rate the cars on a scale of 1 to 10. Having this weeds out cars that are like having the top of the delivery itself saying unwrap this to see a cool paint job and then half of them are either downright stupid or no effort. Having the rating system... A lot of people may download those cars to begin with, but then the more bad ratings it gets for lazy effort, it will drop off the page. So, point to Midnight Club Los Angeles with the rating system. But to see how it works other ways, I'll continue on with this video on YouTube. Pretty much the cars that get the high ratings you can then look at and then decide this is sort of a negative point for Midnight Club Los Angeles. You have to buy the car itself and as far as i can remember you can only have 30 cars in your garage at one time in midnight club los angeles which i know gt6 had that you can only have a certain number of cars in your garage at one time either so that's sort of a negative point that you had to buy the car comparing it to need for speed 2015 where you could just download the livery itself and not have to buy the car that could mean you can have as many liveries as you want on one car that you already bought and it only takes up one space. So that's a negative point for Midnight Club. But again, a positive point, I'll go into the next video, is all the v variety you could do with Midnight Club. And really, this would be a positive point for Need for Speed also, which I'll do in the next video more in depth. This video will be more about the Midnight Club side of it. The next one will be the Need for Speed side of it, and then sort of a verdict between the two at the end of that one. Another thing, like I said, is the variety that could be done in this game, because you could customize the inside of cars in this one as well. I don't know if GT Sport will go this in-depth, but in the article it said that it really was in-depth, so who knows, maybe we could. I guess another thing that could sort of be on Midnight Club side, too, is that... It has the the fake parts as well as the real parts. Need for Speed only has the real parts. The old Need for Speeds had the fake parts. So Midnight Club is a good combination of both. As far as I know, GT Sport probably ain't going to have any of the fake parts. But who knows, folks? Who knows? And another sort of kind of plus point for Midnight Club is that you can also customize the the lights on the bottom the neon or whatever it's called the ground effects 
which is cool for some people. I know some people get annoyed with it, but, I mean, given that you're going to get to do your own custom paint job, some people will like your paint job, some people won't, some people will think it's over the top, and some people will love it. So the ground effects or neon lights or whatever will sort of just be an enhancement or a negative depending on the person. And another thing about Midnight Club that sort of kind of helped it is it was easier to mod stuff in PS3 is once the PS3 kind of became the not main system, the modding went up and then stuff like this happened. Which, in theory, that ain't going to happen in sport because it's going to have online, but I guess that's still kind of a plus point to Midnight Club is you can mod stuff. So pretty much a verdict for Midnight Club, the positives are the rating system, which is the biggest positive of all, because then you can see what cards are truly good and weed out the cards that look like they were good on paper, but really were just stupid or lazy. And another plus point is the ground effects, because not that many games, if any, have that nowadays. And the interior editing as well. But the negatives are that you had to buy the cars instead of just get the paint job for free and put it as many paint jobs in one car that you already have as possible. And another negative in general is just it doesn't have online anymore. I guess you can't really fault that too much, but it doesn't. That's just a truism right your honor. So all in all, I would say if GT Sport went to the Midnight Club side of doing the livery editor that it would be a success. Because even though it doesn't really have as much tiny details as Need for Speed, it's older. So in theory, it shouldn't really be that much of a worry anymore just because the PS4 can handle more tiny details than the PS3. So I think GT Sport would neutralize that anyway. So yeah, I think this would be a good system for GT Sport to pick up because, well, it kind of has everything. He can pretty much design any part of the car, even the inside of the car, so however much or little you want to get, and however much or little you get ends up correlating directly to how good your car does with the people in general, because it's rated. It ain't a perfect system, but I haven't really played one with a perfect system yet, and I'll go into the next video saying the next system and maybe a combination of both or a new thing in general can create the perfect livery editor. Hope you all enjoyed this first video and the second video will be coming quicker than lickety split. And as always, yee-haw! I ain't promoting or unpromoting marijuana in this video. That's just the most popular livery whenever this video came out.